Hey everyone, Paul Clark here. Welcome back to the channel and a big thank you to all the new subscribers. I know that it's still early days for the channel. I mean, I've got less than 100 subscribers, but I'll be honest with you, you know, even just seeing, you know, if there's one a day that trickled through because of a new video I put out, it makes my day. So thank you to you guys for subscribing. And in this video though, I want to walk through how I research a stock. So there's kind of, you know, different, uh, there's a life cycle, I think, when it comes to investing. Um, so when you first kind of start out, when you're thinking about what stocks to invest in, you first have to identify some investments. Okay, so in that process can, you know, include different things. And, and actually, I can put up a video, different video for that. But this one is specifically going to say, if you've identified a stock you want to invest in, what do I do? And so research that before I invest it. Um, and it's also the same process I would research it to be able to put these videos together for you. So there's really five main sources that I would use when researching a stock. Um, so the first resource that I would go to, and I think that this is actually a really underrated resource. So if you have a brokerage account, you know, like a, a Fidelity or a Schwab, and, and actually I have an account with both. I've got all my money right now currently in Charles Schwab. Um, I, I prefer that platform. I think it's the better one. Um, I actually own stock in Charles Schwab as well, as much as I like it. Um, but anyway, when you look at uh, these major brokerages, one of the perks is that they actually uh, give you access to multiple research reports for some of the major stocks. Now, that being said, that is kind of key to talk about the major stocks. If you're going to be looking for research reports for penny stocks or even research reports for some companies that are worth less than a billion dollars, um, those aren't going to be as widely available. Um, but you know, for the purpose of this video, I'm actually going to be using Kraft Heinz uh, as the example. I'm going to walk through about how I would get this information uh, if, when researching the stock. And one of the benefits about a Kraft Heinz is that they're a big company. They're worth you know uh, many billions of dollars, you know, and they're they're just a high visibility company. And so because of that, they have a lot of analysts analyst coverage. They're in the news a lot. So there's a lot of information about them as opposed to again a company that's only worth a few hundred million dollars. So again, with the brokerage accounts, let me show you how we're going to get there. And I'm actually going to pull it up right now. Okay, so we're going to pull it up. We're going to go to Schwab.com here. I'm going to log myself in. Okay, so when we're logged in, we're going to be able to see that there's a tab that says research. Um, and underneath the research tab, there is going to be an option for stocks. We're going to click into that. And once we're clicked into it, I'm going to type in KHC for Kraft Heinz in the search. And then that's going to give us uh, you know, many different things that we can look at. But one of the things is going to be a tab called reports. And then in the reports here, I'm going to kind of scroll down. And as I'm scrolling down, you know, I see that there's a report, you know, from Charles Schwab. And they're just kind of putting together, um, you know, just a ratings report here. You got Morningstar having an, uh, an equity analyst report on it. Uh, Argus, uh, NDR, CFRA, Thomson Reuters, Vickers. So there's many different reports you can use. My favorite is the CFRA because when I'm looking at these reports, I'm kind of interested to see what their commentary is for these. But I feel like it's also nice to be able to just have one, uh, you know, consolidated place where the data is put together. So if I open up this CFRA, for example, we can take a look at this report. So again, they've got their price target on this, and they've got a lot of different summary information, and they've got their highlights, and you know, their commentary, the corporate overview, all of those things. Um, but then if we scroll down, um, you know, to the third page of this report. You know, they just have one nice area where they've consolidated all of the company's financials. So they've got the some of this per share data, they've got the income statement analysis, the balance sheet data, and they're trending this out from 2010 to 2019. So there's a lot of times when I'm doing research for this and I want to understand, you know, what the free cash flow has been for a company for the past five years, ten years, whatever else. I'll go to reports like this and I'll be able to get that information. And, and that's information that's available. You know, you'd be able to go through the SEC filings and get that. You'd be able to go through other, you know, subscriptions to get that. But I just think that this is a nice way to leverage a resource that's already available with the brokerage account that you might have. So again, I would I would go through this, I would, you know, figure out what different analysts are saying. And and, and by the way, because you also have to keep in mind that just because one analyst has this rated as a buy doesn't mean that the other ones do. They can have different price targets. Um, but again, I think it's just good to kind of go through, understand what they're saying, understand if you agree with it, if you don't, and of course, always make your own decisions. Okay, so again, I think it's really underrated. Really recommend it if you're not already doing it. You know, there's great information in these research reports, so check them out.
The second thing I do when I'm researching a company, and again, this is necessarily not in any particular order. These are just the top five things that I use. The other thing that I would look at would be just simply looking at news articles. Now, I've got a subscription with the Wall Street Journal. Um, you know, I think I pay about, it's like 19 a month. I'm sure that I could call and negotiate that down, but I mean, that still feels pretty reasonable, especially relative to, you know, how much I go back in history and, and look up some of these things. They've got a lot of great information. I, I feel like it's worth it for me. Uh, that being said, you know, in, in the case of Kraft Heinz, like I would literally Google um, Wall Street Journal Kraft Heinz and I'd look back over the last last few years about as many news articles as I could find. And with my process, I actually start copying all of those articles into a Microsoft Word document. Again, this is just kind of the way that I think it's easier for me. I'll copy those articles over to Microsoft Word, and then as I'm reading through them, I'm able to kind of highlight the sections that I want to either learn more about, or the sections that I want to talk about in the video, the sections that I think are well, are pertinent to, um, uh, to an investing thesis I might have, you know, for why I want to own a company. Um, you know, so I think that's just good to have those all in one place. And then kind of at the top, I'll just kind of pull back all the, all the highlights and start kind of, um, you know, putting that summary information together. So I think that's a really good way to go as well. And, and then of course, I'm just, just Googling the stock, Googling, you know, Kraft Heinz price target and see if there's any articles about that or just Kraft Heinz. I mean, it's not just the Wall Street Journal. I know that that's just one of the resources that I probably utilize the most, but any credible news source you can find out there, um, you know, so even articles on Seeking Alpha, I mean, Motley Fool is okay. Um, you know, you can see what Jim Cramer has to say. I mean, you can, you can always, you know, take somebody else's perspective. Don't, you know, it's just the important thing is to not let that other person's perspective be the final word. And if you wanted kind of a, a metaphor, you wanted an example of, of an area where you may be doing that in your life already, by the way, I mean, think about your love life. You know, it's like you might listen to what your friends say about who you should date or who you should marry, but hopefully at the end of the day, you're going to be with who you want to be with based on how you feel about it because you made up your own mind. And as silly as it might sound, I feel like you have to come to that same conclusion and that same approach with investing. Don't get married to a stock just because you read some message board and they said that this penny stock was going to go from two cents to five cents or two cents to a dollar. I mean, that's not the way you should do it. Okay. so. My opinion, but that, that's that's my take on that. Okay, the third resource that I utilize is just simply going to the investor relations uh, section of the company's website. So all companies that are publicly traded have an investor relations section. That's where they want to be able to kind of share information with investors. Um, you know, so and. With the that uh, section of the site, some companies have more information than others. Again, usually the bigger companies will provide more information on the investor relations site. And in the case of uh, Kraft in particular, like they just recently had an investor day. So if we go um, to Kraft Times and, and you just Google Kraft Times investor relations, and again you click on that link, it's going to bring you there. And there's going to be all sorts of information here. Um, you know, and, and one of the things was saying, uh, let's see what it's called here. So they had news and events, uh, events and webcasts. We're going to click on that. So for events and webcasts, we're going to scroll through and we see that, ah, okay, you know, they did have an event in the past called an Investor Day 2020, and they've got an Investor Day 2020 presentation. And we click into that and we're going to see that this is, I mean, a, a PowerPoint or a PDF that's going to have 274 pages of information that's going to be detailed information about the company's history, about their brand strategy, about brands that they have, about, you know, the cost savings or just, you know, there's just a, a ton, a ton of information that's going to be packed into these reports. And again, it's just another resource that you can use when you're making up your mind. Um, so I wouldn't, you know, just 100% uh, take their forecast, you know, like that's the final word, but it's another component that goes into your understanding of if you want to be involved with this stock or not. Okay, number four is going to be the SEC filings. So primarily going to be the 10Q and the 10K, the quarterly and the annual reports respectively. And these are reports that public companies are required to put out to be able to communicate their uh, their financial results. They walk through management's guidance. And it's also really key because they, they also walk through risk factors relative to the company. Um, so there might be some risk factors in there that you haven't thought about with the company, maybe in terms of other competition, uh, or maybe in terms of their liquidity. Those things are called out in that report and those can be really helpful for you to understand the risks better as well. Um, 
But really, at the end of the day, the SEC filings are going to be some of the most objective places that you're going to find financial information about about these companies because. You know, of course, the SEC, I mean, regulating this, they're taking this pretty seriously, um, you know, and I think even if you were going to be looking at this report and maybe your eyes gloss over when you look about the accounting principles that they use and maybe those aren't really useful, you know, even if you were just going to jump to the management discussion of the business, I think that can be a really important segment of it if you were going to be scared off about some of the more uh, kind of detail of those reports because those can be quite long. Um, so I think that jumping to that can really add some value to it. Uh, and then, of course, you know, being able to actually understand the financial statements that they're publishing, I think, is a really kind of key part to being a, a savvy investor as well. Um, so, again, that's number four. Let's take a look at number five, the final one that I would reference here, and this is by no means to suggest that there are not other sources that you can utilize, but the last one for me that I want to share with you is the earnings call transcripts. Now, I say the transcripts because I personally would much prefer to read um, the earnings call uh, you know, conversations than I would to actually listen to it. I'm able to read and kind of highlight much faster than I would be to again just listen to it. So if it was going to be an hour call listening to it, you know, maybe it takes me 15 minutes to read through it and I would much prefer to go that route and then not just reading through it. Uh, but having the transcript, I don't have to actually type anything out. I can just highlight things and then, you know, if I need to take additional notes, I can do that. And I feel like that's much more efficient for me. Um, but you know, with these earnings call transcripts, I mean, these are the, the companies that, first of all, they kind of go through their own presentation where they're saying, hey, he, you know, here are the results. You know, we made money, we didn't. You know, here's the plan going forward. Here's what happened. And they lay all those things out in their earnings call transcripts, or their earnings calls with analysts. And then at the end, there's usually a Q&A with analysts where the analysts have an opportunity to ask questions. And they can say, hey, you know, I know that you're expecting to, um, you know, double your sales by next year, but you know, we've noticed that you've only been able to grow by 10% over the last couple of years. And that, that's, you know, maybe too basic of a, of a question, but that's the general idea is that analysts then have an opportunity to dig into, um, to ask good questions of management. Um, so they can either understand something better that hasn't been discussed or, you know, challenge something that they don't think maybe is quite accurate, maybe so they can understand it better. But hearing the kind of questions that investors or analysts are asking uh, of the management team, I think just hearing those kinds of questions and getting in the habit of trying to think in a similar way can also make you a better investor. And then of course, just the information alone, that knowledge is gonna make you a better investor as well. So, so there it is. So again, this is the process that I use when I'm going to be putting together a video, when I'm going to be putting together an investment that I want to add to my portfolio. These are the resources that I would go through. This is the process that I would do to do the homework. And, and you know, because by the way, I'll, I'll tell you, you know, I, I would hear that a lot when I first kind of started with investing that, hey, you got to really do your homework, you know, do your homework on the stock. And, and um, you know, I think for a little while there, I, I was kind of of the mind of, hey, I, I want to do the work. Um, but what exactly does that entail, right? And, and you got to understand it's going to be different for everybody. You got to go with an approach that makes sense to you. Um, so definitely keep that in mind. Um, and, and I would also say as, as you're going through this, that, you know, don't be afraid to kind of, you know, come up with a metric that makes sense to you. Like if you want to, if you want to think about things a little differently, if you, if you can't find, you know, a spot where they're specifically talking about, you know, their average revenue per uh, subscriber for a certain business, for example, if you're able to say, okay, well, here's the revenue for that segment, you know, here's the average number of subscribers in this quarter versus that quarter, you can start doing that division yourself and saying, oh, okay, here's what that you know number would be. Okay, now I understand that better. So again, don't don't be afraid to be able to take that information and come up with some of your own metrics as long as you understand, you know, what you're trying to get at. So, all right, hopefully this was helpful for you guys. You know, again, my process. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next video.